pick mine up. This is incredible. Never had God taken on human flesh in its fullest sense. There were appearances of the angel of the Lord before, and that was truly the Lord Himself in many of those cases. But now, God comes into the flesh. Now, if I were to ask you the question, did God make Jesus? Most of us would give a resounding, no way. Jesus is the Creator. He was before all things. He is eternal. God did not make Him. And to that I say, Amen and Amen. That is the truth. But listen, friends. God knew that equality with God was something that we could not grasp. So he made himself nothing, taking on the image of a servant and being made, being fashioned into the likeness of a man. Psalm 139 says that in my mother's womb, you knit me together. You know me full well. You made me. To think of this, did God make Jesus? He did not make Christ. He did not make the second person of the Trinity. For God is eternal and creator. But God certainly fashioned a body and gave Him a name that was a human name. A name that many Jewish people had in that day. Yeshua. But He exalted that name and made that name above every other name that at the name of Jesus ring it, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ, man, Lord, created, creator, together, Jesus Christ is the Lord. Why would God do this? Why would He do this? Two things that I want to say. First, He did this to break the power of the devil. The power of death. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 says this, Because God's children are human beings, made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could He die. And only by dying could He break the power of the devil who had the power of death. God became man. The Creator literally entered into His creation to break the power of death. We also see in verse 17 of chapter 2, He came to take away our sins. It was necessary for Him to be made in every respect like us. Then He could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. God became Jesus. He put Himself in the flesh in order that we, that He might die to take away our sins. That is the very reason He came. That is the Bethlehem birth. That is what we celebrate tonight and tomorrow and throughout the year. That God, the Creator, the Eternal One, chose to make Himself nothing and made Himself in the image of a man. Never before having been called a son, 
never before having been given a name that is a human name. But he did it so that he could die. He did it so he might become like you and like me. To break the power of Satan, to break the power of death, and to remove our sins. In order that he in his human form might be risen from the dead, glorified and exalted by the Father, and to sit at his right hand. And to know this, Jesus Christ in the flesh is coming again. This very precious baby knit together by God's hand for God Himself to enter into, to live out His life in order to restore a relationship between sinners and the Creator. That through His death, we might have life. Hebrews 2 verse 9 says, We see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because He suffered death, so that by the grace of God, He might taste death for everyone. <clears throat> this is our God. Creator, eternal, and was made man so that He might save us from our sins and give us eternal life There were shepherds living in the field nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people today in the town of David. A Savior has been born to you. He is the Christ, the Eternal, the Creator, the Lord. This will be a sign to you, you will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom His favor rests. I bring you good news of great joy. There is a God who loves you so much that He would fashion, not a Plato man, but a precious babe in the womb of a virgin girl in order that He might enter into our life and die our death. For anyone who believes in Him, you have eternal life. Because today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, we thank You. We rejoice because of the incredible wonder that You've done. You fashioned man and entered into Him. And we call Him Jesus. He is our joy, our hope, our life, our glory. He is the purpose we celebrate tonight and tomorrow. And throughout the year. Oh God, let us come to the door of You. 
Let us bow before you and to know that there is joy that has come to the world because you have worked an incredible wonder in the Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand as we stand.